The scene opens in the Nancy Reagan High School where we see a girl named Wednesday Adams. She opens her lockup and sees her younger brother Pugsley inside tied with ropes. She asks her brother who did this to you, she gets visions and sees them. Then she finds those boys in the pool area where a boy tells her to leave, calling her a witch and crazy. Hearing this, she angrily throws two bags of piranha fish into the pool, all of them try to get out of the pool, but the fish attack one of them and she smiles. Her mother Morticia, her father Gomez Adams, and her father is going to leave her in the Nevermore boarding school. Wednesday isn't happy with her mother's decision and says she will escape from this school too. Morticia says you will be among peers who understand you and you'll even make some friends. A boy gets out of the car near Nevermore, the woman advises him not to stop there but he leaves. The boy goes inside the woods and decides to sit for a while, but suddenly an unseen creature attacks him. The family reaches the Nevermore, they meet with Principal Larissa Weems. The principal tells them that they don't admit anyone in mid-term but because of Wednesday's good marks and your parents also studied from the same school then the board has admitted you. Principal takes her to the room where she introduces with Enid Sinclair her new roommate who is Werewolf. Before leaving, her mother gives her a locket of Aztec and a crystal ball. They leave and her father drops a walking hand to keep an eye on Wednesday. Sharif Galpin and her assistant find a mutilated dead body of a boy who recently attacked and asks her assistant to issue a warning to keep people out of the woods. Wednesday divides her room into two parts, Enid feels bad about this but before they start an argument their teacher Thornhill arrives. Miss Thornhill gives Wednesday a black rose, Wednesday asks to go outside but she explains that the locals are a tad bit wary about Nevermore. The next day, Wednesday goes to the playing area where she gives a sword challenge to Bianca. Both girls fight and the first round is level, Wednesday asks her to fight without face guard in the second round and whoever bleeds first will lose. Bianca accepts the challenge, and both girls show their skills but Bianca draws her blood and wins. Wednesday starts to leave and suddenly a gargoyle falls on her but Xavier saves her. While she is writing the novel, she finds Thing the hand and threatens to close it, but the hand named Thing stops her. Wednesday asks Thing to help her escape from the school and leaves Thing. The next day, the principal takes Wednesday to the therapist Dr. Valerie, and insists not to even try to run away from there. The therapist asks her to discuss everything without any hesitation but Wednesday takes it as a waste of time. During the session, she goes into the washroom, and with the help of Thing she escapes. She goes to the cafe where she meet with Taylor who is busy in repairing his cough machine. Wednesday repair his machine and in return she asks for his help to leave her the railway station. Taylor agrees and asks her to wait until his shift ends, when she is waiting, some church students come there and tell her to leave their table. Wednesday gives them scary death stare and beats all of them. Sheriff Taylor's dad comes there and says he will keep an eye on her because she is a Nevermore student. When Principal comes to take her and calls her by her father's name, Sharif says your father was a murderer and should be in the jail and they leave. At night, she sends Thing to Taylor to ask him for the video call and during the call Wednesday asks for his help in escape during the Harvest Festival. Taylor comes to help her and gives her a file of her father's case and when they try to leave the church student arrive for the payback. They both runs, Rowan collides with her and she gets visions of his death and runs to save him. Rowan uses his magic and hangs her with the tree calling her a witch and a threat but before he kills her a monster like werewolf attacks him and kills Rowan on the spot. Police is searching Rowan's dead body but after searching for hours they couldn't find anything. Sheriff comes to the school for investigation but the principal tells him Rowan escaped. Wednesday tells the sheriff that somebody is trying to hide the murder which is the only reason to scrub the crime scene and eventually Rowan comes back to school. After that, Wednesday wants to talk Rowan but the principal tells her Rowan expels from the school and will leave soon. She then orders Thing to keep an eye on Rowan, the Thing follows him, but as he reaches the railway station Thing lose him, Rowan transforms into a man and then takes on the form of the principal. Wednesday goes to the woods to see the spot where Taylor comes and hides her from his dad who is looking for the murderers with his dog, Taylor asks her about the festival night and she tells that Rowan was in danger and when I went to save him he attacked me with the help of telekinesis and a monster came and killed Rowan. Wednesday finds Rowan glasses and she touches it she get visions of Rowan fighting with Xavier and he finds a book in which he tears out a page and threw gargoyle on Wednesday. She goes to Xavier's room to look for the book, but there comes Bianca, Xavier's ex, and she talks a lot against Wednesday. Wednesday and Thing hide under the bed and listens to their conversation, Bianca asks Xavier to stay away from Wednesday and leaves. Enid is crying and tells Wednesday that Yoko eats the garlic bread and can't participate in Poe Cup. Wednesday realizes that it is Bianca's plot and agrees to become Enid's co-pilot to take down Bianca. Enid tells her that Bianca's team won every year. No other boat has made it cross and back without sinking but there are no rules in the Poe Cup, but she is a siren. The contest ensues and soon Bianca beckons to her siren partner who jumps into the river and sinks the other's boats.
When the siren reaches Wednesday's boat Enid throws a net which stops the siren. After all contestants reach the edge, they run to get the flag but Wednesday has visions again only to see her twin who tells her you are the key. Everyone leaves with the flag and Wednesday takes out the spikes from his boat to sink Bianca's boat in the river. As she reaches near to Bianca's boat siren comes and push their boat in the other direction. Thing jumps into the river and punches the siren, Team Wednesday quickly reached Bianca's boat and hit the nails to their boat which caused their boat to fill with water. Team Wednesday wins the competition for the first time and takes her revenge on Bianca. At night, Wednesday finds the book on Edgar Allan's statue where she writes some words on a page. She reads and snaps two time and the secret door opens, she goes inside to investigate but suddenly someone puts a black cloth over her mouth and takes her away. Some people tie her to a chair, but as soon as they remove the cloth from her mouth, she recognizes them all. It's Bianca, Xavier, and the rest of the school students who tell Wednesday this is our secret area where we party, and when Xavier asks Bianca to add Wednesday to the team, she refuses. Wednesday hears this and tells Bianca she doesn't want to join the kids' team and leaves. The principal takes all students to the Pilgrim World for the outreach day, where Wednesday and Eugene go to the Crackstones meeting house, and inside she sees the vision girl holding the black book. Mistress Arlene comes telling her to leave the meeting house but Wednesday asks for the book. Arlene says that the original book was stolen last month by someone and she makes it their duty to make fudge. Wednesday goes to the woods where she finds the original meeting house where a man asks her to leave but she attacks the man by the thing and drives him away. She finds nothing and touches walls and doors to get visions but nothing happens. As she tries to leave and touches the door her vision takes her to the year 1625. She sees people beating her same vision girl named Goody Admas, Crack Stone calls her a witch and Lucifer's mistress. She says to Crack Stone you have slaughtered the innocent and robbed us of peaceful spirit and you deserve to be punished. She hits him in the mouth with a knife and Crackstone slaps her and takes her to the room and Wednesday goes there too. Inside, her clansmen are tied up and Crackstone sets the room on fire, Goody goes to her mother, who tells her to run away and take revenge. Both girls escape and Goody tells her that he will kill every one of them, Crackstone comes saying you'll not escape. Wednesday wakes up and informs Thing that the girl's name is Goody Adams and she's her ancestor from 400 years ago. She sees the monster and starts the chase but only sees the monster's footprints change into humans. Xavier arrives and takes her back to the Pilgrim, during the performance Thing set fire to the oil mark which hits Crackstone's statue causing an explosion. Everyone flees except for Wednesday who plays the violin and the principal realizes this she did this. The monster kills another man in the woods and the camera takes pictures. Sheriff goes to the scene where he finds the camera and when he washes the reel he is shocked to see the monster. In Jericho County Medical Center, Wednesday goes inside to check the autopsy and finds the old man who's recently murdered by the monster. She gives info to Thing who prints but the sheriff comes there with the doctor and interrupts them. The doctor shows him the amputated foot of an old man whose two toes were eaten by the monster and the sheriff asks him to share the autopsy report. During the lecture when Xavier asks her to join the disco night, she notices claw marks on his neck. She follows Xavier to his art studio and when he leaves she quickly goes inside and steals a sketch of monsters. She then goes to the sheriff and shows him a sketch but the sheriff asks her to bring concrete evidence. Wednesday and Eugene go inside the cave where she finds the monster's teeth and a bloody cloth. After this, she meets with the sheriff and gives him the monster's tooth and bloody cloth. Wednesday tells him to do a DNA test to find the killer. The sheriff asks her about the suspect but she tells him to run a test. Eugene goes to the forest to keep an eye on the monster, but someone sets fire to the monster's cave and starts chasing him. On the other hand, at the disco night when all the students are partying, Mayor's son along with his friends makes it rain red. Everyone mistakes the water for blood and runs away, and Wednesday has visions of Eugene in danger. Wednesday runs to save him but the monster tore him apart and she only sees him helplessly. 1990, when Principal Weems was leaving and the man fell, she screamed and saw Gomez standing holding the sword. Weems tells the sheriff that both of them have an issue and the reason for this murder is Morticia, then police come and arrest Gomez. A parents' meeting is held in Nevermore and everyone's parent comes to meet their children. The principal Weems tells Wednesday's parent that she is not doing well and also not open properly with her therapist. Weems says she talks with Dr. Valerie and it will be beneficial if you spend family a session with her. During the session, Wednesday asks her father about the murder of Garrett Gates but her mother becomes angry and leaves. Morg docks suicide but the sheriff finds a black bubblegum on the CCTV camera. His assistant tells the suicide note states that the doctor was worried about an old case because it hid the real killer. The sheriff asks about her case and she tells him that Garrett Gates. Wednesday sees her mother going to the graveyard where she puts a flower on a grave and when Wednesday sees, that grave is Garrett's. A family dinner begins at Nevermore and the sheriff arrives and arrests Wednesday's father for Garrett's murder. 
Wednesday visits Jail to see her father and asks him about the case and her father starts telling her that during the night of Raven Dance, when he and Morticia were making love Garrett came inside the school and started the fight. Being mad and passionate in love, he started beating me and I accidentally stabbed him with a sword. When Wednesday asks her mother, she tells her that she killed Garrett and her dad took the blame on himself. Wednesday and his mother go to the mayor and show him the nightshade poison that Garrett wanted to kill the whole school with. Wednesday tells the mayor that you were the sheriff at the time and you were the one who hid the truth. His mother asks the mayor to drop all the charges against Adam and get him out of jail, and the mayor agrees to save his honor. Outside, how can I control my visions Wednesday asks her mother and Morticia tells her that only the dead one can help you. Wednesday tells her about Goody Adams and her mother warns her saying that Goody was a powerful witch but her vengeance killed her. After saying goodbye to her family Wednesday goes to the principal office and tells her that when Rowan died you impersonated him just as you impersonated Judy Garland on the talent show and calls her a face shifter. The principal tells her that whatever she did was to save the school's honor and asks Wednesday to keep it a secret. They hear a noise outside and when they go to see it, fire will run, someone writes it on the ground. Wednesday tries to talk with Goody but Enid interrupts her magic and when both girls are talking someone throws a card inside their room. The card says, if you want an answer, meet me in the crypt of Crackstone at midnight. Enid and Wednesday go to the crypt where her friends give her a birthday surprise. She touches the wall and gets a vision of Goody who tells her that Crackstone is coming and you're the raven of my bloodline. Wednesday go to Garrett's house with Enid and Taylor to find out about the Crackstone and they all go inside. They search the house and Wednesday steals a playbox of Garrett's daughter but the monster comes there both girls hide inside the lift. The monster continues attacking them and the lift breaks and the girls fall inside the basement. The monster comes inside the basement but before he attacks them they quickly jump out of the window. They find Taylor who is heavily wounded and Xavier also reaches there to help them. The principal gets angry and gives Wednesday a last warning, Enid leaves her room and she left alone and promises herself to solve this case. Wednesday finds out that Dr. Valerie is a Laurel Garrett, she returns her playbox and tells her who she is and to hide the truth that she killed Mayor. Doctor argues with her and tells her to leave before she calls Judge Reynolds and Wednesday leaves. Doctor calls the principal and tells her about the irrational behavior but the monster comes inside her house and kills her. Wednesday then goes to Xavier and asks him to tell the truth but before he can do anything Sheriff comes and arrests him. Then she goes to see Taylor and they both share their first kiss but she gets a vision of a monster who killed Dr. Valerie which is Taylor and she runs out. Wednesday kidnaps Taylor with her friends and takes him to Xavier's art room where she asks him why he killed people. But the sheriff comes there and takes his son, while inside the station Taylor tells her the truth that he's a beast and tells her you've no idea what's coming. The principal expels her from the school but she asks for another chance to prove that Taylor is a real hide. The principal disagrees with this and orders her to pack her stuff and goodbye to her friends. Wednesday goes to meet Xavier and tells him that Taylor is a real hide and he traps him. Xavier asks how she knows, she says I saw it in the vision when he kissed me. Xavier gets angry calls her toxic and says all you do is make things worse. After this, she goes to Miss Thornhill and finds out she's the real mother of Taylor and Thornhill speaks the truth Taylor changes into Principal Weems. Weems changes her face to Taylor and learns the truth but Thorn kills her by injecting her in the neck. Inside the crypt Thornhill casts a magic spell and awakens Crackstone. Crackstone stabs Wednesday with knife, Goody comes to her and tells her Crackstone must be stabbed through his black heart and it's the only way to kill him forever. Goody pulls out the knife and heal her with her powers which makes Wednesday even more stronger. Wednesday fights with Crackstone and successfully stabs him in the heart and kills him forever. Thornhill tries to attack her but Eugene comes and releases bees on her which kills her. After that, Wednesday goodbye to her friends and leaves the Nevermore but she receives some texts that I'm watching you. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to watch more videos like this.